What's something that sounds completely illogical, but is actually correct? Story 1. The Monty Hall Problem. In short, it looks like this. You have three doors. Behind two doors are goats, and behind the third is $20,000 in cash. You get to pick one of the doors. Then, Monty Hall will reveal the goat behind one of the remaining doors. Finally, you get to choose to keep your door, or swap to the new one. Do you swap doors? The correct answer is that you should always swap. On the surface, it seems like a 50 50 shot, and most people who are presented this problem will say that your choice doesn't matter. However, it doesn't take into account your previous action. Unlike the gambler's fallacy, in the Monty Hall problem, your first choice influences the results of the second. When you picked your first door, there were three cases. In two of them, you picked the goat, and in one, you picked the money. Odds are two in three that you selected the goat. You still have that door when the other goat is eliminated, meaning that the odds are now two in three that the remaining door is the money when accounting for the previous cases. Story 2 Everybody misunderstands how drugs like Adderall treat ADHD. You always hear people claiming that if a neurotypical person takes it, it hypes them up, whereas if somebody with ADHD takes it, it calms them down. This is wrong. People with ADHD aren't extra hyper. Rather, they act exactly as a neurotypical person would act if devoid of any rewarding stimulus. A regular person wouldn't sit still for long at a desk in an empty room with nothing to do. They would pace in circles and fidget and lose themselves deep in daydreams because that's what humans do when they're bored. People with ADHD are bored a lot more often because their brain's reward system is broken. They don't get tiny little dopamine hits for completing necessary tasks like the rest of us do. The reward system is everything. Without the rush of happy chemicals from sex, nobody would breed. Hunger might suffice to compel one to eat, but we would all be undernourished if food didn't taste good and if our brains didn't give us a hit of happy chemicals for eating something tasty. Doing your homework or some necessary adulting doesn't give a fraction of the dopamine hit as getting laid, but it's still something. But if you have ADHD, it's basically nothing. You don't complete your tasks because you literally have no incentive. You fidget and get distracted because your brain is telling you there is literally nothing else to do. What drugs like Adderall do is make the reward system generate a whole lot more happy chemicals. Enough that someone with ADHD is suddenly incentivized to do one's work. Neurotypicals, meanwhile, are just extra extra incentivized. You can give Adderall to a kid and watch him sit down at his desk and do his work, but by no means is that kid calm. That kid is intensely focused. He is more awake than he has ever been. He has more energy than he has ever had, but he's narrowly focusing all that energy on a single task. The way people talk about untreated ADHD, you would think it's just like being hypomanic, but it's nothing like that. It's much more akin to clinical depression and the meds do the same exact thing to them as to neurotypicals. The only difference is that with ADHD, you're bringing a broken reward system to equilibrium by flooding it. Whereas if you have a normal reward system, it's just extra flooded. Story 3. The double slit experiment in quantum physics, where you're firing electrons at a barrier with two slits. Logic suggests you should see two lines on a screen behind the barrier, but instead, you get a pattern like waves interfering with each other, implying each electron goes through both slits simultaneously. Yet, if you observe which slit they go through, the electrons revert to acting like particles, forming only two lines, as if they know they're being watched. It's a mind-bending phenomenon that sounds illogical, but is scientifically proven. Story 4. The Monty Hall Problem This is a game show that was run by a host, Monty Hall, where there are three closed doors, and behind one door is a car that the contestant can win if they manage to pick the right door. Since only one out of three doors is a winner, the chance of the car being behind any particular door is 1 slash 3 yard or 33%. The game proceeds like this. Contestant picks a door and tells Monty their choice. Monty walks over and opens one of the remaining two doors, not the contestant's choice, revealing a losing door, not the car. Monty asks contestant if they want to stick with their original choice or switch their choice to the remaining closed door. Switching to the remaining closed door gives you a 66% chance of winning 
versus 33% odds if you stick with your original choice. So the contestant should always switch doors after Monty does his reveal. It seems illogical because you'd think the chance of it being behind your door is 33%, and the chance of it being behind the other remaining unknown door is also 33%. But this is false. You can work it out with simple probability math, but it's pretty straightforward to rationalize it once you look at the problem correctly. When Monty picks a door, one of two things are true. Option 1. You've got the winning door as your first pick, so Monty is just picking at random from the remaining two. Option 2. You didn't get the right door on your first pick, so Monty is forced to open the non-winning door out of the remaining two. He can't open the winning door. The odds of you picking the right door on your first pick are 33%, so there is a 66% chance it is behind one of the other two doors. Since it's more likely to be behind one of the other two doors, it's more likely that Monty Hall has been forced to open the non-winning door, thus giving you information about which door is correct. So switching is a better strategy. Story 5. Imagine a rope tied tightly around the earth. Because it's tight, you would have to add length to the rope in order to lift it up. If you wanted to lift it up by one meter all around the world, how much rope would you have to add? Well, about 6.28 meters. It sounds wild until you think about your geometry and remember that circumference is 2PR. Story 6. Double slit experiment. Especially this part. To find out, you might place a detector by the slits to see which slit an electron passes through. And that's the really weird bit. If you do that, then the pattern on the detector screen turns into the particle pattern of two strips, as seen in the first picture above. The interference pattern disappears. Somehow the very act of looking makes sure that the electrons travel like well-behaved little tennis balls. It's as if they knew they were being spied on and decided not to be caught in the act of performing weird quantum shenanigans. Source https semicolon slash slash plus dot maths dot org slash content slash physics dash minute dash double dash slit dash experiment zero story seven whales are technically fish in the layman sense no they are not fish as we know them but lineage wise mammals are fish you cannot categorize cartilaginous fish like sharks and bony fish like salmon as fish while excluding mammals similarly birds are reptiles and dinosaurs U.S. If you aren't going to owe taxes, you don't have to do them until October. On a state level, I'm not sure about. If you pay off debt, your credit score will go down and you will take a hit because you lack history. We have a space probe inside the sun's atmosphere. Story 8. The Prize Door Probability Calculations In a game show, if you are given a set of three doors and one has a cash prize, you are told to pick one. After you pick one, one of the non-prize doors is revealed you have the option to pick between the two doors, which one is more likely to have the prize behind it. Logically, you'd expect them to have an equal chance of having the cash prize, but no, it's actually the door you didn't pick. The probability works like this. Initially, you have a 33% chance of picking the right door and a 67% chance of picking the wrong door. That 67% chance is important here. When they reveal the non-prize door, that probability doesn't change. You still picked one with a 33% chance, and that other door now has a 67% chance of being the right one. Story 9, The Monty Hall Problem If you're given the choice of one of three doors, one contains a prize. Once you choose one, one of the other doors is open to reveal that it has nothing behind it. You're then given a choice to switch doors or stay. You should switch every time because you have a 66% chance to win, but only a 33% if you stay on your original chouse. Story 10. Wombats and basically everything about them. I mean, they use self-defense twerking to protect themselves from predators. I know it sounds fake, but it's legit. They enter a burrow and intentionally leave a space above them for a predator to stick its head in. Then they repeatedly smash the predator's head into the ceiling using their bone-plated backside. Story 11. The more I've repeated it, the more it sounds normal and correct. But I was interested to learn during my chemistry degree that viscosity of a gas is the opposite of a liquid wart temperature. When you heat a liquid up, the viscosity goes down. But when you heat a gas up, the viscosity goes up, and vice versa. A neat little fact. I guess the increase in particle movement makes a gas more viscous. Story 12. Ever heard of the birthday paradox? 
It's this wild idea that seems totally illogical at first. So get this, in a group of just 23 people, there's actually a pretty good chance that at least two of them share the same birthday. I know it sounds crazy considering the gazillion possible ways birthdays could match up. It's like, wait, what? But trust the math on this one, it's a head-scratcher that messes with your intuition in the coolest way possible. So next time you're in a room with 23 folks, start taking bets on who shares a birthday. Story 13. Obama is related to, on his mom's side, John Punch. A black indentured servant that was, after escaping with a couple white dudes from a pretty brutal boss, jobbed into chattel slavery. The white men that ran like he did just got extended years. So that means his white family and his, supposedly, and formerly, racist white grandma was a descendant of a pretty famous black slave that got fucked by the system because he was black. Story 14. The equation for determining how big a black hole would be for a specific amount of matter is actually really simple. It's only a few variables. Turns out when you add up all the matter in the observable universe, all the electrons and neutrons, protons, dark matter, energy, etc., it turns out that the black hole would be larger than the observable universe. What could this mean? Potentially, we are inside of a black hole. Story 15. All studies show that September is the most common month to be born in. My birthday is September 16th. My eldest son is also born that date. At the school where I teach, September is the most common birth month having more than three times as many birthdays in September than in any other month. If you are born in September, you were conceived around Christmas and New Year's. So, if you slash your partner is not already pregnant, Tonight's the night to make yet another beautiful September baby. Story 16 Every time you shuffle a deck of cards, it is almost certain that combination of cards has never existed in history. There are more ways to arrange a deck of cards than there are atoms on the Earth. If you had a trillion people shuffling a deck a trillion times a second, for a trillion years, there would be a 40% chance two decks were the same. Story 17 Depends if you are trying to get somewhere or if you're waiting for a set amount of time. Assuming homogeneity, the amount of rain that hits you from above per minute is constant, plus however much you run into, which is constant per meter you travel. If you're trying to get home, going faster is best, as you'll minimize the amount of water that hits you from above. If you're going to be out for a set amount of time, say, waiting for a bus, standing still is best to minimize the amount of rain you walk into. Walking slowly is basically never optimal, since you're increasing the time in the rain while still walking into rain. Either rush home or stand still. Story 18. Diabolical is the exact opposite of divine. Diabolical strategies are offensive, while the divine strategies are defensive. Morals are conceived by the very nature of these terms. The two terms only have meaning when someone realizes that good versus bad is not the same as right versus wrong. Human nature is not a debate, but values are situational, subjective, and conditional. No one has any idea what they're doing, but we all have to agree on the same dogma so that we can determine who we hate and who we approve of to keep the world turning. Without diabolical, there is no divine. Story 19. This question is a tough one to answer considering all of our logic is based on limited knowledge. I have a very hard time putting too much faith into modern science and research these days due to the possibility of biased study. You just honestly don't know who or what you can trust for facts anymore. Or trust anything in general, everyone seems to lie about everything depending on how much they were paid off to do so. So I guess that would be my answer. Logic currently is illogical due to special interest politics. Story 21. For a long time, it was everything. Autism and ADHD wombo combo had me compelled to info dump about any random thing I recently learned or was fixated on to everyone that crossed my path. Now I hold back and pull something related to what the person said from my bank of useless information. I still get fixated on random things all the time, but the info dumping is moderated by a type of social awareness now. The fusiform gyrus is a part of your brain that, among many other things, allows you to see faces. The ability to recognize faces in anything you see depends on it. Some people have a fusiform gyrus that doesn't work in such a way that they lose the ability to see faces. 
They will recognize heads and eyes and arms and chairs and whatnot, but the face parts don't compute as a face. It's just so crazy to me. Brains and neurobiology are overwhelmingly crazy. No one really knows how they really work to produce our conscious experience. Story 22. Ask ChatGPT for this cause I heard it somewhere. In high-performance driving, such as with sports cars, speeding up rather than braking during drifting or sharp turns can be important for several reasons. Maintaining control. Accelerating can help maintain control of the car. In a drift, the driver intentionally oversteers, causing the rear tires to lose grip. Accelerating can help balance the car and keep it stable. Maintaining momentum. Speeding up helps maintain momentum through the turn. Braking can cause the car to lose too much speed, making it harder to complete the turn effectively. Optimizing traction. When you accelerate, the car's weight shifts to the rear, increasing the traction of the rear tires. This can be beneficial in a rear-wheel drive sports car as it helps the driver maintain control while oversteering. Utilizing the car's capabilities. High-level sports cars are designed to handle acceleration in turns. Their advanced suspension, tires, and aerodynamics are optimized for high-speed cornering. However, this technique requires skill and experience. It's typically used in racing or controlled environments and is not recommended for regular driving situations. Story 23. Money can't actually buy happiness. It can definitely help with bills, debt, food, and other basic needs, but I've met and lived with rich people who hate their lives because they haven't yet learned to love themselves at a deep level or haven't learned to be content or grateful for everything they already have. Not saying you can't be rich and happy, by the way, but I've met some poor and even homeless people that were the most peaceful, content, and happiest people I've ever met, Lowell. Story 24, The Monty Hall Problem. You're on a game show and are shown three doors. Behind one door is an expensive car, and behind each of the other two are goats. You are asked to select a door knowing you will win whatever is behind that door. You pick door A. However, before opening door A, the host opens door B to reveal a goat. The host offers you the chance to change to door C if you want. The problem then is, is, is it better to change to door C or stick with door A? A common answer is, there are two doors and therefore a 50. 50 chance each door has the car. So it makes no difference whether you change doors or not. This is wrong. By changing doors, you actually double your chances of winning. Story 25. There's a mountain so tall it casts a shadow on the moon. Every night, its silhouette reaches across the lunar surface, a celestial dance few witness. Sounds crazy, right? Yet, this celestial needlework is the work of Mount Chimborazo, the closest point on Earth to space. Its majestic peak pierces the atmosphere, catching moonlight and painting its presence on our celestial neighbor. Illogical? Maybe at first glance. But reality, like the universe, has a knack for surprise. Story 26, the let's make a deal thing. You pick one of three doors. Then Monty Hall shows you the not valuable thing behind a door that you did not pick. Then Monty says that you can switch doors if you want to the one that you didn't pick and that he didn't show you. Statistically, you should definitely switch. But most people just can't get their heads around this and will insist that statistically the one you picked still has the same chance of winning as the mystery door. Original pick. Your door has a 33% chance of bring the grand prize. There's a 66% chance that it's behind one of the other two doors. Now one of the other two has been eliminated. Remember, Monty knows. Your door is still at 33%, but the one Monty did not show you is now at 66%. It's twice as good a choice. Switch! Story 27. Basically any veridical paradox, such as birthday paradox. In a room of 23 people, there are a 50% chance two of them will share a birthday. Monty Hall problem. If you're told a prize is behind one of three doors and have you pick one. After licking one, they eliminate a door that has no prize, and you are given the choice to change your door to the other one or stick with your pick. The answer is, you always swap. When you first picked a door, there was a two-thirds chance it was one of the other two doors. When another door is eliminated, the chances from your original choice don't change. It's still 2-3 that the other door has the prize, and your original choice is only 1-3.